Hello everyone, I hope you're doing okay. Today we're talking about the Scrapper Scoundrel, the spec in which you roly pull it around and literally punch your way through the galaxy with your bare fist. It's pretty awesome and a very fun time. So let's talk about it. Brief disclaimer, as usual, I'm not an expert, I'm just a nerd. I play a lot of Swell Dwarf, I kinda know what I'm doing. But is there anything that I missed, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. I'm sure your fellow players would appreciate it. All right, stats, very quickly. Accuracy, 110% in PvE every single time. In PvP though, you don't need your accuracy, you can kind of dump it. In Alacrity, 7.2% Alacrity, that should compensate for most of your lag issues, and then throw everything else into crit and you should be ready to rock and roll. For our tactical, we have actually a couple options here. For sustained damage, we're gonna look at Acid Lash. Actually, that's going to increase the damage of our flechette round and make our flechette rounds regenerate over and over and over again. It's the sustain, it's the sustain choice for most PvE situations. However, you have some other options here. If you want just big fat burst, you can go with the Volatile Strike, which will make Bludgeon explode your blood boiler and then make your back blast automatically critically hit. It's pretty nice if you want that big opening burst damage, especially if you're like a PvPer. This is the one you want to go for. And then you can also go for explosive cells if you want to be farming fat AOE damage, if you're doing like heroics or if you're questing, or if you just want to farm massive AOE numbers, explosive cells is going to be the way to go. But for the purposes of this guide, we're just going to look at Acid Lash. It's the most straightforward and it's what we're going to be using in most PvE situations. Legendaries, locked and loaded, just flat 5% range and tech damage. It's not that exciting, but it's just flat damage. And then we're gonna take the Tactician Package. You've seen that every time you get an upper hand, you will get an extra 10% critical chance. These aren't that interesting, I'll be honest with you, but they're the best performing at the moment, so they're what we go with. All right, Combat Style, you have actually a couple of options here. We'll talk through the different options as they appear. 23, we take Rolling Fist. It's going to uh, give Sucker's Punch an increased 10% critical chance, and every time you use a Sucker Punch, Pugnancy is cool, it's going to be used for 10 seconds. This one's very important. We'll talk about why later. Moving the line here, in PvE, Strategic Surrender is going to be your best friend. In PvP, take Dirty Kick for the big CC. Moving the line here, Setup Shot is just phenomenal. It's going to make you do a whole bunch of crits, which is very, very nice. Some people take the best defense, especially in like PvP situations. But personally, I just like Setup Shot more because I like big damage. Who doesn't like big damage? Moving line here, upper critical is great in PvE. It's passive, you don't have to worry about it. In PvP situations though, you can definitely make the case for hot streak where it's gonna give you a whole bunch of your cooldowns back, but it has a very long cooldown. So upper critical is great for sustained damage. Hot streak is great for situational use. It's kind of up to you. Moving line here, scar tissue. It's just the best 5% uh, DR is great. I take keep it cool. It's the most useful, frankly, for your energy management systems. Especially if you're like looking up a guide on how to play Scrapper Scoundrel, you'll probably want to take this one. It's just the most forgiving of the bunch. Some people, especially in PvP, will take Skedaddle. It's kind of up to you. It's also just fun to say Skedaddle. Skedaddle. It's a fun ability. Moving the line here, Trick Move is great. It gives us some upper hands, which is very, very nice. It's also a leap, which is nice for us as a melee spec. I know we have a blaster. We're a melee spec. Some people in PvP, though, will take Flash Grenade. There's a lot of good options on this tree. Kind of depends on what you want to be doing. Finally, back at you, is just the most fun. Like there are some cases to be made for scramble being good. Some people want to take KO, but frankly, uh, back at you is just the most fun. And then scramble is like, if you want to be actually getting more of your dodge, but that's not as fun as reflecting 150% damage. So I personally take back at you. All that's boring though. Let's talk about actually doing damage well, too bad. We're not going to do damage with our first ability we're talking about here. As first, we're going to talk about Pugnancy. This is the most important ability that we have. It's going to give us 10% alacrity, which is going to help out with our energy management. And it's going to give us upper hand, which is very, very nice. And it's going to give us 20% critical damage. So it's just a whole bunch of damage. But I did mention two resources that we have to be juggling that this ability helps out with. That would be our energy and our upper hands. Let's talk about both very quickly. Energy is this little yellow bar down here underneath your health bar. The abilities that consume energy do a lot of damage. And so what we want to be doing is we want to have as much energy as possible to make sure we're able to use our high damaging abilities. However, this spec is very dangerous. And the lower your energy goes, the slower your energy regenerates. So that means if you mess up and say you drop your energy to like 5%, your energy is going to regenerate very, very slowly 
which is, um, it's not good. It's not great. There's nothing more sad than watching a scrapper scoundrel sit here at 20% energy, struggling to do any damage because they botched their energy management. So our goal is to keep our energy above like 70% if we can help it. And that's why our potency is so nice because it gives us 10% alacrity, which helps with our energy management. So it's a very nice use for pugnancy. Additionally, pugnancy grants, grants us an upper hand. Because this spec is so special, you actually don't just have one resource to manage, you get two. Upper hand is this little yellow guy right here. He's like giving like a little fist pump. We can have a total of two of them. Upper hands are used to execute our special abilities. We have some specs or some abilities in this spec generate upper hands, some abilities in this spec consume upper hands. And what we wanna be doing is we wanna be juggling having enough upper hands to execute our upper hand consuming abilities. It's essentially just an extra resource you have to be paying attention to. If you ever run into an ability here where you're like, I, I should be able to use this ability, but I can't, it's probably because it, it consumes an upper hand and you don't have any upper hands. So pugnancy does us a great favor of granting us one of these upper hands that we can use later on down the line. Essentially, we wanna be smashing pugnancy 24 seven. It's a great little ability. The damage boost is okay, but it's all these passive benefits on the side of extra crit chance from our legendaries and extra critical damage and extra energy management and extra upper hands. It's just a great little ability. We wanna be smashing it as often as possible. But that's boring. Let's talk about the abilities that we use to actually do damage in this little four button priority tree here. Starting from the top with Back Blast. Back Blast, as you can probably suspect by the name, is an ability that you probably want to be using, at least when you start off, from behind the target and shoot them in the back. You can see just by reading the tooltip here, when you use it out of stealth, it does a little less damage. When you use it from stealth, it's going to do 30,000 damage and give you an upper hand. It's gonna give you the upper hand yellow fist pumping guy, all right? It's a great little ability. It also does a whole bunch of damage. For example, let me stand behind this dummy and then boop, it does like 47,000 damage and it applies this little dot down here called flechette rounds. Essentially, it does initial damage and then it does extra damage later, which is uh, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. It applies a damage over time ability. Don't worry, we'll come back to those later. Just know for right now, if you use Backblast from stealth, it's gonna do a whole bunch of damage and give you an upper hand and apply a dot to the target. It is our most important single target damaging ability. We want to be spamming it on cooldown pretty much every single time because it does a whole bunch of damage. All right, this first ability, Backblast applies a dot. It's a good one. Up next, we have our Blood Boiler. Blood Boiler is supposed to do like 25,000 damage to the target. It's pretty great. Uh, but if you see here, when you apply it to the target, it's gonna wait for a couple seconds, uh, but it's not doing anything. That's sad. What's wrong? Well, it has to actually detonate from a damage over time ability. Now, if you remember, when we use our backblast, we apply a damage over time ability to the target, which means that if we have our flechette rounds on the target, Blood Boiler will then detonate. So you can see how these two abilities kind of play into each other, right? Blood Boiler needs a dot to detonate, backblast applies a dot, it's pretty darn nice. Now, if for some godforsaken reason you end up running away from the target, you can't get a black blast off, you can also use a vital shot. A vital shot is a damage over time ability that has a little bit of range to it. So if it is still on the target, you can't get a black back blast off, you can always use a vital shot if you really want to. It's not as efficient. We don't wanna be spending it this way, but if you're running away from the target, you're just scampering around, you can always use a vital shot to detonate that blood boiler. You can also use like a bushwhack if you want to. It, it's, it's, you'd rather just use the back blast and the flechette round than anything else. So you're gonna notice though, that when I use blood boiler here, and then I say detonate it, it's going to leave this little debuff on the target called hot and ready. It's hot and it's ready, all right? It's like that one pizza chain. So what does this mean? It means that it's vulnerable to, bla to back blast, which means that if you use back blast from any position now, you can, you can use it from the front, it's going to treat it as if you attack from stealth. Because if you remember before, it does less damage, doesn't generate a, a upper hand if you don't use it from stealth. However, because of this debuff that you can get from applying Blood Boiler and detonating it, you can use Back Blast from any position. So you can be staring him in the face and shoot him in the back, which is you know pretty hot, and get the upper hand and do more damage whenever you use your Back Blast. So you can see how these abilities are kind of playing into each other, right? They, they play into each other very nicely 
one applies a dot to detonate the other. Once the other detonates, it gives you upper hand and gives you more damage. It's a nice little cyclical rotation here. For these two reasons, these two abilities are our highest priority. Whenever they come off a of cooldown, we want to be smashing them as often as possible, with Backblast being the most important, followed up by Blood Boiler. Smash them pretty much 24-7. They're great little abilities. But what about when we're not hitting those two abilities? Because this has like a 14 second or 12 second cooldown. This has like a, a 17 second cooldown. Uh, that's a lot of time. What do we do between that? Well, I'm glad you asked. That is when the juggling upper hands portion of the podcast comes into play here between Bludgeoned and Sucker Punch. Bludgeoned is a boring ability. Bludgeoned has like a five second cooldown. It does like 21,000 damage. It's pretty boring. You hit someone in the face, do a fair bit of damage, but it gives us an upper hand. And so what that means is it's a consistent way every five seconds to be generating upper hands that we can then be spending on more fun abilities. Bludgeoned is not that interesting. Just recognize it, it's an upper hand generating machine. We wanna be using it anytime we're at like one or zero upper hands to make sure we're getting that cooldown back as fast as possible so that every five seconds we can be using it and getting those upper hands back so that we can spam them on Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch is the bread and butter of this entire spec. You'll be pressing more sp more Sucker Punches than you will any other ability because if we just spam it over and over again. Sucker Punch is special because it's the first ability that we've mentioned so far that actually consumes upper hands. Uh, so it does a boatload of damage. You punch the target twice. So you do a little boxing animation, you know, give them the old razzle dazzle, and then you essentially do a whole bunch of damage. Additionally, every time we use our Sucker Punch, the cooldown of our pugnancy is going to be reduced by 10 seconds. So for an ability that has like a two minute cooldown, if you use 12 Sucker Punches, you'll get these punch and seed back right away like just spam sucker punches over and over and over again and you will get pugnancies back way faster than that two minute cooldown it's very very nice additionally if you remember our tactical that we took called acid lash acid lash is going to do a whole bunch of damage and it's going to refresh every time we use a sucker punch here so for example if I come here and use my back blast and I use my blood boiler, then I use a sucker punch, well, I'm going to re-trigger the entire cooldown of, of the flechette round, which means that I'm gonna keep this dot on the target at all times, which means that I'm gonna be doing more damage. Additionally, every time you use a sucker punch on a bleeding target, once every, I think it's like five seconds or so, you'll actually regenerate a upper hand. So by keeping a dot on the target, we will continually be regenerating upper hands whenever we use sucker punches. It's a great little way uh, to essentially just keep building those upper hands over and over and over again. It's very nice. So of all the things that sucker punch does, it does consume an upper hand, which is you know kind of sad. However, it does regenerate the cooldown of pugnancy over and over and over again. It does give us more flechette rounds over and over and over again, keeps it on the target. And then it just does a whole bunch of damage, which is frankly, really nice. We love to see it. So how this entire spec works is you're going to be smashing Backblast and Blood Boiler pretty much on cooldown, and then we're going to be filling between Bludgeons and Sucker Punches over and over and over again. You're gonna be using Bludgeon whenever you're at like one or zero tactical advantages, and then you're gonna be spamming Sucker Punches as often as possible. This way you get more pugnancies, which gets more crit chance, which gets more crit damage, which gets more alacrity, which gives you more upper hands. You wanna be spamming Sucker Punch as frequently as possible. And you've developed this little bit of a dance of spamming your high damaging abilities and then juggling our upper hands between bludgeon and then spending everything that we possibly can on Sucker Punch over and over and over again. It's kind of a good time. Now, there is a small mini rotation, not for the whole thing. We're gonna, the priority system is priority system. That's just what it is. It's very straightforward. You can play this spec with like six buttons. However, there is a little bit of an interaction here because if you remember, we took the setup shot, which is going to cause the next direct damaging attack to critically hit every time you use your shank shot. Shank shot, frankly, doesn't do a whole lot of damage. It's supposed to be like a little immobilized ability here that does like 12,000 damage, but it has a couple of advantages. First, it doesn't consume any energy. This spec is very energy demanding. So 
anytime we can take a small breather and just like use a shank shot and get that one extra global cooldown to help regenerate the energy, it's gonna be really nice. Additionally, the cooldown lines up pretty much perfectly with our blood boiler. Now you'll be tempted to use your shank shot on your back blast, which is fine, totally valid, especially in short-term engagements because then you get the big black blast and then you do a whole bunch of damage, pretty nice. However, it's it's gonna fall out of sync because back blast comes off a of cooldown before our shank shot does. So in the long haul, it's just not as efficient as using a little bit of trickery. So if we discussed earlier that Blood Boiler has to get on the target, has to like settle for a cooldown and then it explodes. We can take advantage of this and make our Blood Boiler crit every single time by going Blood Boiler and Ability and then our Shank Shot. And so what that'll do is it'll make our Blood Boiler automatically crit every single time. So for example, you could go like Blood Boiler, Back Blast, and then Shank Shot, and then boop, it's going to automatically cause our Blood Boiler to crit every single time. We want to be doing this pretty much every time you use a Blood Boiler of Blood Boiler ability Shank Shot. So again, one worth of road, Blood Boiler, Back Blast, Shank Shot, and then that will cause our Blood Boiler to crit over and over and over again and cause one of our hardest hitting abilities to literally never not crit. It's pretty great, it's pretty hot. Now, we once in a while will run into a situation where we don't have any tactical advantages at our disposal, all of our primary abilities are on cooldown, and we can't be spamming Sucker Punch. What do we do? Well, first we take a look and see if we have our Trick Move. Trick Move is a pretty great ability. It is our leap. You can use it from anywhere within 30 meters of the target. So if you hit it, boop, it's gonna teleport you over and it's gonna generate an upper hand. This is our once every 45 second way of generating a free upper hand. So if you come into a situation where like, oh my goodness, I'm out of upper hands. I don't have any way to, to generate more. You get this one get out of jail free card once every 45 seconds by using your trick move to you know, spam more of those sucker punches. It's pretty darn great. But sometimes you won't have trick move available. None of your primary damaging abilities would be available. What do you do now? This is where most people screw this up because they get greedy and they want to use this little ability here called Vital Shot. Now, Vital Shot does a fair bit of damage. It does like 23,000 damage. It's pretty nice. However, however, it consumes 15 energy very quickly. And what this does is it very quickly puts you in a very dangerous position where you could drop below like 50% energy. And then from there, you're in the death spiral. Now, there is one situation in which you have my permission to use Vital Shot. If all of your primary damaging abilities are on cooldown and you have no extra ways of generating tactical advantages and you are over 90% energy and you have your Adrenaline Probe, then I give you permission to use a Vital Shot. You're probably gonna mess it up. I'll be honest with you, because I still do too. I'm a Nim Raider, I've, I've cleared all this stuff. I still mess this up because I get greedy and go for the vital shot. Have more discipline than I do. Please, do not use vital shot unless you're over 90% energy and you have your cool head available to get that energy back because if you mess it up, you get one get out of jail free card with cool head and then you're stuffed. The only other good filler ability here is gonna sound like heresy, it's actually Flurry of Bolts. Flurry of Bolts does like 6k damage. It's a pathetic little ability. However, it doesn't consume energy. It's a very safe way to play this spec. If you ever get to the point where you're like, oh my goodness, I could run out of energy, you can feel free to hit that Flurry of Bolts button. Buy yourself one second of generating a little bit of energy in the background. Totally acceptable. It's frankly what I default to most of the time when I'm playing this spec. And you can still pump a whole bunch of numbers in this spec even with spamming Flurry of Bolts whenever you run into the situation where your primary damaging abilities are off of cooldown. Let's wrap this up one more time very, very quickly. Pugnancy, great ability. Energy management gives you upper hands, gives you crit chance, gives you crit damage, gives you alacrity. It's pretty darn nice. 
Pugnancies, cooldown will be reduced every time we use a sucker punch. Pretty awesome. Priority system, in order. Backblast, whole bunch of damage, applies a dot. Blood boiler, requires a dot to detonate. Once it does detonate, causes your backblast to be buffed. It's pretty darn nice. Moving on down the line here, then we juggle between bludgeons and sucker punches over and over and over again. Sucker punches also refreshing the duration of our backblast cooldown. A sample opener for what you might want to do is you're going to go pugnancy, backblast, blood boiler, sucker punch, shank shot, and then juggle from there. So what we're doing is we're getting all of our buffs up in a row. We're getting that blood boiler on. We're refreshing the cooldown of flechette round. And then we are getting the big fat crit from shank shot. So it looks something like this. Pugnancy into back blast, blood boiler, sucker punch, shank shot. And now we juggle. Now we just juggle back and forth. We're trying to make sure that we are maintaining as many of those upper hands as possible. So one or zero upper hands, then we can use our bludgeon. Otherwise, we can go back and default to just spamming sucker punches over and over and over again. You're gonna see here that I am already down to another um, pugnancy right away. Like that's how quick you can get a pugnancy back. That's supposed to be a two minute cooldown. We did that in about, oh, I don't know. Two little rotations here, like it's not that long, and you can be getting those pugnancies back over and over and over again. It's pretty darn nice. And then from there, just juggle. Just juggle, just juggle, just juggle, and you should be ready to rock and roll. Again, another pugnancy back right away. You can see how just by spamming that sucker punch over and over and over again, you're gonna get a whole bunch of these pugnancies, which are gonna be just increasing your critical damage increasing your critical chance, it's gonna be increasing your alacrity, helping you manage those resources over and over and over again. It's a fun little spec, I'll be honest with you. If you wanna go out and be a roly-poly boy and do a whole bunch of single target damage, this just might be the spec for you. If you run into any trouble, if you get below like 50% energy, you can definitely hit the cool head. If you don't have cool head available, you should probably take a little cool down off and just you know relax, cool your jets for a little bit to make sure that you're not gonna get yourself into too much trouble here. If you run out of energy, it's just it's just sad. It's just sad to watch a scrapper scoundrel that doesn't have any energy or any way to recover it. So that's really all there is to know. This spec is like six buttons. It's pretty darn great. However, there is a downside. Uh, we have no defensive ability, like straight up none. Zero, nada. We have defensive screen, which is gonna give us like 30K absorb, which is nothing, but it does have like a 30 second cooldown, so it's relatively quick, uh, but it's not that impressive. We have dodge, which is going to increase our defensive chance by 200% for three seconds, which is, uh, it's, it's nice, it's nice. It's also a reflect for force check, for force tech damage, which is pretty good, pretty good. But it's once every minute, you get to dodge one ability once every minute, have fun. We also have the ability here called Scamper. Now Scamper is not what it used to be. However, every time you use Scamper, it's gonna roll you forward. It's gonna be a little primary mobility movement, which is you know pretty darn hot. It's also gonna give you a 30% chance to dodge attacks. So it's a chance. It's no longer guaranteed. This is just a straight up 30% chance to dodge. Good luck. If you wanna risk it for the biscuit, you totally can, you know, be that big gamer, you know, get that big RNG, uh, but it's not the guarantee that it used to be. We also have the benefit of some self heals here in the form of slow re release med pack. Slow release med pack does like 18K healing over the course of the next 18 seconds, and you can stack it twice. So you can do like, you know, 32,000 healing, which is not bad, not bad, but that's really our only self healing here. We do have some options of using like a Golto pack if you really want to, but the healing is pretty pitiful, I'll be honest with you. And then the final healing that we have is Diagnostic Scan, which is laughable. It's like 6K over three seconds. It's pretty darn bad. If you have to be off healing as concealment, something's already gone terribly wrong, feel free to throw around Colto or slow re release med packs because they're just like the most helpful. But other than that, you can kind of just like never worry about healing and if something goes wrong, blame your healer. That's what all good DPS do. Blame them healers. I think that covers everything. If there's anything that I missed, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Recommendations, questions, comments, complaints, concerns, conundrums, etc. But that's kind of all that I have. Um, Duke didn't participate in today because he's busy sleeping right here. He's a good boy. He's chilling. He's vibing. 
and I hope you can chill and vibe as, hope as, as hard as he did. Like and comment and subscribe. Or don't. I'm not your mom. You do whatever you want. Take care.